All right, for this handout, we're going to review all the different methods that we've learned about to solve a system of equations. Remember that um, there is one solution for this system. So every method that you use should get you the same result. And you can also check that you are correct by just plugging back into the original. All right, so first way, it wants us to use either the substitution method or elimination method. So you could do either one of those. Um, it looks kind of like it could be almost set up for using the substitution method because you can get that x alone very easily. So we could try that. And I think in this answer key, I'll put both of them depending on which one that you use. So if it's substitution, we want to get that first x alone. So I would divide everything, everything by 2. So we're looking at the first equation in this form, x equals 1 minus 4y. And the second equation, I didn't do anything to, so I'm just rewriting that. And so the substitution is that this 1 minus 4y will sub in for the x. So that will look like 3 times 1 minus 4y plus 10y is equal to 5. So we're now down to one equation with one letter that we don't know. So we'll uh, work on kind of cleaning this up a bit, distribute. Now 3, 3 minus 12y plus 10y is equal to 5. So we'll combine the y's together. There's negative 12 and 10. That's negative 2y is equal to 5. Let's move the 3 over. We get negative 2y equals 2 divided by negative 2. Looks like y is equal to negative 1. So remember, our system's not done until we have all the variables solved for. So I'm going to take this y equals negative 1 and plug back into that original equation. So that will be x is equal to 1 minus 4 times negative 1, which will end up being negative 4 times negative 1 is plus 4. So we have 1 plus 4, which is 5. So it looks like our solution should be x equals 5, y equals negative 1. Now I want to double check that, so I'm going to go back to my original system here before I manipulated anything. And if I plug in the 5... Let's see, this will be 2 times 5 equals 2 minus 8 times negative 1. So we have 10 equals 2. Negative 8 times negative 1 is plus 8, so we get 10 equals 10. That worked. And then on the bottom, 3 times 5 plus 10 times negative 1. Hope that equals 5. Let's see, this is 15. Negative 10, that does equal 5. Yay. So we know that the solution to this system, again, no matter which method that we use, will be 5, negative 1. So we know that's our solution, so now it's just the process. All right, um, so again, for number 1, it said use either method, substitution or elimination. So I just wanted to show if you did do the elimination way, what that would look like. And when you use this method, it's nice if you have both of them uh, equations in standard form. So that means your x and y on one side. So I'm going to move my 8y over. So that will be a 2x plus 8y equals 2. And the second equation is 3x plus 10y is equal to 5. So then you could decide what you want to eliminate. I think the x's might be easiest because they're smaller numbers. So to make 2 and 3, we can make them both look like 6's. So multiply by 3. That will give me 6x plus 24y equals 6. And then on the bottom, multiply by a negative 2. That will give me negative 6x minus 20y equals negative 10. And that will eliminate those x's. We're going to get a positive 4y equals negative 4 when we combine 6 and negative 10. So now we're down to one equation with one variable. We'll divide by 4. We get y equals negative 1. So then again, we need to find x, so we plug back into either the first or second equation. I'll we'll just plug into the top one. So that will be 2x plus 8 times negative 1 equals 2. That's 2x minus 8 equals 2. Add the 8 to both sides. We get 2x is equal to 10. Divide by 2, and we have x equals 5. So again, we're getting that same 5, negative 1. Just a different method, okay? So these are um, kind of the ones that, uh, methods that were most familiar to you before we even started. So the ones that we've learned about in our college algebra class are these bottom four. So let's start with Gaussian elimination. That one, remember, our goal is 
to um, put our matrix into row echelon form, which is the diagonal of once and the zero down below. We can have any number up in that upper part. Okay, so let's rewrite our matrix into the augmented form. So we had already kind of rearranged this guy using that elimination. So I'm going to look at that for my matrix. So it'll be 2, 8, 2, and then we're going to have 3, 10, 5. Okay, so again, we need to remember what our goal is. And so let's start and try and get a 1. One of the easiest ways to get a 1 is to just divide by the number that's there. Um, there's some other ways you could like subtract these and work on getting that that way. As long as you're using row operations, there's lots of different ways. I'm going to just take half of row 1 to make my new row 1. Make sure that you're writing those row operations. Okay, this matrix would then be 1, 4, 1, and we have 3, 10, 5. So then my next goal is to make the 3 become a 0, and that happens by um, adding a negative 3. So if I take negative 3 times row 1 and add that to row 2, that will make my new row 2. So let's see. I'm going to rewrite my matrix here. So row 1 is still 1, 4, 1. And then if I look at the bottom there, um, I'm going to take negative 3 times row 1. So I'm just going to write that negative 3. That will be negative 12 and negative 3. If we add that with row 2, that will be a 0, a negative 2, and a positive 2. And so then lastly there, let's take half of row 2 again because I want that negative 2 to be a 1. So it's actually half of negative 2 to make my new row 2. And so what that would look like is still 1, 4, 1, but we'll have 0, 1, negative 1. And so now that I'm in that row echelon form, the bottom, actually this whole thing, is really x plus 4y equals 1, and then we have y equals negative 1. So we have one of our variables. We'll use back substitution to plug that in there, and we get x plus 4 times negative 1 equals 1. That's x minus 4 equals 1. So if I add 4 to both sides, we get x is equal to 5. So again, this is the same result. We get 5, negative 1, but this was using a couple of row operations. Now, Gauss-Jordan elimination, its goal is 1, 0, 0, 1. And so really, I can just say, well, look over here, <laughs> and let's see where you ended, which is there, that matrix. 1, 4, 0, 1, 1, negative 1. So it's all the steps that we did in um, that um, Gaussian elimination, but then we're going to keep going a little bit more because we need to make that 4 a 0. So I'm just going to kind of write continued from 2. And so to make that 4 a 0, we're going to take negative 4 times row 2, add that to row 1 to make my new row 1. So my row 2 is still saying 0, 1, negative 1. But when I take negative 4 times row 2, I'm going to kind of write to the side here. This will be 0, negative 4, 4. And we're adding that to row 1. So that would become 1, 0, and then 5. The 4 plus the 1 makes the 5. And so what's nice about this gauss jordan elimination, when you're in reduced row echelon form, you can just rewrite this as its equations. We know right away x is 5 and y equals negative 1. So still same solution. Now for the inverse of the coefficient matrix, we need to think about the ax equals b matrix equation. And really what we're solving is a inverse times b. So a... We already know, looking from up above, was 2, 8, 3, 10. So remember to find its inverse. It's 1 over that determinant of A, and then times, we flip-flop that diagonal, and then we change the signs of the other diagonal. So um, let's see, that determinant is going to be the 2 times 10, so that's 20, minus 8 times 3, that's 24. So it looks like A inverse is 1 over negative 4 
and then the matrix times 10, negative 8, negative 3, 2. So to solve using that co inverse of the coefficient matrix, we want to actually just multiply the inverse we just got times b, where b is our constant column, which would be the 2, 5. And I keep referring to the rewrite that we did up there. So 2, 5 is the what we are equal to part. So our variable mat column matrix will be a inverse, so negative 1, 4, 10, negative 8, negative 3, 2, times 2, 5. So the first row times the first column is going to be 10 times 2 plus negative 8 times 5. And then the second one, the row times the column, that's negative 3 times 2 plus 2 times 5. So we're going to get, this will be 20 minus 40, that's negative 20. Negative 6 plus 10 is 4. So when we multiply negative 1 fourth in, negative 1 fourth times negative 20 is positive 5. Negative 1 fourth times 4 is negative 1. So again, we're still getting uh, x is 5 and y is negative 1. All right, the last method that we learned was Kramer's rule, which is all about determinants. So we know that to find the x-coordinate, we find the determinant dx over d, which is the determinant of the coefficients, and then dy over d. So um, just d is looking at that coefficient matrix, which we keep writing out. I'm looking over here. 2, 8, 3, 10. So that's our big D. I put the lines on it to show that we're taking the determinant. So we'll do 2 times 10. Okay, minus, because that's what the determinant says to do, and then go the other way, 8 times 3. So this will be 20 minus 24, which equals negative 4. So that's our big D. To find dx, we replace that first column with the 2, 5, those constants. So 2, 5. And then we find that determinant again. So we'll do 2 times 10, but this time it will be minus, and we go the other way, 8 times 5, which will be 20 minus 40, which is negative 20. And then last, dy, that replaces the y. So I'm going to have 2, 3 from the original coefficient matrix. And then I'm going to write the 2, 5, the constants in there. And so we'll do 2 times 5. And then minus, because that's the way the determinant formula works. Go the other way, 2 times 3. So it's going to be 10 minus 6, which is 4. So plugging in, if we know that d is negative 4, dx is negative 20, and dy is 4, then we know that x, being dx over d, would be negative 20 over negative 4, which is 5, and y, which is dy over d, will be 4 over negative 4, which is negative 1. And again, we're getting that 5, negative 1 solution.